Hello, I hope you're doing well today, and I want to welcome you back to Alfred's Basic Adult Piano Course, Lesson Book Level 1. This video is Lesson 73. We're going to cover page 84 in the book. More about triads and the primary chords in A minor. <laughs> All right, so at the top of page 84, first we're going to talk more about triads. Specifically, we're just going to look at the very small difference between a major triad and a minor triad uh, on a keyboard. So let's review first about uh, major thirds and minor thirds. So right underneath the title, more about triads, it says some of the thirds you have been playing are major thirds. Now, they give a little example there, and in that little example under major third, notice there's just two black keys. So we're dealing with C, D, and E, and you can just use your right hand here. Um, I'm just on middle C here in the middle of the piano. Uh, so they're highlighting the C and the E, and they're letting us know that that's a major third. Now, even when I play C and E together, you can hear it's kind of a happy, bright sound. So that's always a characteristic of major. But to be absolutely certain, notice in parentheses it says four half steps. So a major third, any major third across the piano, is four half steps. So you start on C, and remember a half step is from one note to the very, very next note, black or white. So C to C sharp, that would be one half step. C sharp to D would be two half steps. D to D sharp would be three half steps. And finally, D sharp to E would be four half steps. So there it is, C to E is four half steps, and that's a major third. Now we can test this anywhere else on the piano. I could actually start on F sharp. So F sharp to G, that's one half step. G to G sharp, that's two. G sharp to A, that's three. And finally, A to A sharp is four half steps. So F sharp to A sharp is a major third. And when you play it, you hear it. It sounds bright, sounds kind of happy. So a minor third is, is very, very close to a major third. So going back to the C and the E, if you look at a minor third, they have C and E flat or you could call it D-sharp if you want. You can hear the difference now. It's not, not as bright. It's got a little bit of a darker, more uh, gloomy sound to it. And that is three half steps. So again, C to C-sharp is one half step, C-sharp to D is two, and D to D-sharp, there's our third half step. So the difference between a major third and a minor third lies only one half step apart. So here's a major third. So basically to make it a minor third, take that note down a half step. It's a minor third. So I'll go back to my example earlier. F sharp and A sharp is a minor third, right? Take the A sharp down a half step, and that's a minor third, and you can hear the difference. So a bright, happier sound is major, a little bit darker sound is minor. So very little difference between major and minor third. They're just a half step apart, but a pretty big difference in the sound it creates. Now, number two, on the right side of the page, it says all of the fifths you have played so far are perfect fifths. So a perfect fifth would be C to G is what they've highlighted. And they're saying here seven half steps. So we already said C to E is four half steps. So let's continue. E to F would be a fifth half step. F to F sharp would be six half steps. And then F sharp to G would be seven half steps. So that's called a perfect fifth. And when you think about what they're doing here, we've talked about a major third, they're talking about a perfect fifth. They're basically talking about a major chord. So a major third, and then a perfect fifth basically equals a major chord. 
Number three, it says major triads, or major triad, if you will, because a triad is specifically a three note chord. It says it consists of a root, in this case C, a major third, in this case E, and a perfect fifth, in this case G. So we're really getting into the details of why a major triad is built the way it is. Now we go back to our example I had earlier. So remember uh, F sharp to A sharp is a major third. So that's four half steps right there, right? So if we continued to find our, our perfect fifth from the A sharp, I'm gonna go up another half step. So that's five half steps, six half steps, seven half steps. So there's our F sharp major triad, a chord that you wouldn't see really uh, all that often, which is a great example of this because uh, it's a little more difficult to figure out the notes of an F sharp major chord. This is also G flat, by the way, but if you break it down by the system, uh, you can't go wrong. And then at number four, we see minor triads consist of a root minor third and perfect fifth. So again, it's almost identical to a major triad. So if I'm going back to C major, for example, it says a minor triad consists of a root, so it's still a C. Uh, the perfect fifth is still the G. The only difference is instead of a major third, it's a minor third. So essentially what we're dealing with here in this lesson is the difference between a major triad and a minor triad, and there's very little difference. Here's a major triad. So if I want to make it minor, all I do is lower the third a half step, make it a minor third. Now I have a minor triad. So this would be C major, and this would be C minor. Same thing for the example I had earlier. F major, lower the third a half step, F sharp minor, and you can hear the difference. Now, it works this well when you're dealing with root position chords. Now, they didn't tell us this, but these are root position chords. That means the C is at the bottom. C, E, and G. So no inversions. They have to be root position. Now, if I'm inverted, it still works. It's just this is no longer the third, right? The third is still E. It's still E, so this would be C minor. So I want you to know that it still works when you're inverted. It's just a little, there's a little more thought to it, and we're really not gonna go that deep today in this lesson. So we're just dealing with major triads, they're in root position, and lowering that third to make the minor triads in the root position. So in the middle of the page, at number five, it says play the following triads with your right hand, one, three, five. So that's the fingering one, three, five, which I've been doing. So we're gonna do that for all these chords. We're gonna use the same fingering. It says say C major triad, C minor triad, etc. as you play each pair. Then repeat one octave lower using your left hand, five, three, one. So we'll do that in just a moment. But right now, we're in the treble clef, and we're starting with C major. So you can see the first chord there, C, E, G. So we make sure that, you know, your thumb's on one, three is on E, five is on G. So that's C major, and see the flat on the next chord, next to the E? That is lowering that E a half step. So you're going from C major, and they want you to say that. And when you play C minor, they want you to say that. So you're kind of just memorizing these chords today as well. Both what they look like on the treble clef staff, a little bit more so though of what they sound like and what they feel like and look like on the piano keyboard. So it's really not as much today about reading it as it is looking down here and hearing the difference. So again, C major. And then your third finger makes it C minor. Now in the second measure, we're going up to D major. 
So D major is D, F sharp, and A. If you question that, review the, the formula. Four half steps above D is gonna make you make the major third. So here's one half step, two, three, four. So that's why the F sharp. So to make it minor, we lower it. Notice in the music, it's an F natural. And that's going to cancel the sharp and put an F. And now we have D minor. So D major, D minor. The next measure, we're up to E major. E, G sharp, and B. Again, G sharp is four half steps up from E. And then we're gonna lower it, and now it's E minor. So one more time, E major, and then E minor. And lastly, we're only gonna go up to F today. So F A C is F major. Notice the A flat for my third finger for the A. Makes it A minor, uh, excuse me, F minor. So we got F major, followed by F minor. So now we're gonna do the same thing in the left hand. So they didn't put the bass clef for this, but that's okay because again, it's not really about reading today. It's about understanding what it's doing down on the keyboard. So I'm gonna play my C major an octave lower. And remember, all you gotta do to make it C minor is lower that third. And with your left hand, it's the same finger. It's the third finger. So lower it a half step to E flat. You got C minor. So C major, C minor. And then we've got D major. So remember D major has the F sharp. D minor, lower it to F. So we got D major and D minor. Going on, we have E major and then E minor. Once again, E major, E minor. And lastly, we have F major and F minor. So that's basically it. And of course, you can do the hands together. That would be a wonderful exercise as well. And just like any other time you play chords, make sure all the notes sound simultaneously. And the exercise isn't about rhythm, so I, I realize they have half notes here, but don't worry about a steady rhythm. This is all about just playing these chords. And that's basically it. So it's a great half, half lesson, the first half of this lesson, uh, recognizing the, the minute difference between the major chord and the minor chord. And again, we're sticking to root position. It's really easy to see it there. Uh, yes, you can do this, of course, in any inversion, but it's a little more difficult to recognize it right away, and that's for a future lesson. Now we're gonna get into the primary chords in A minor, and a couple lessons back, remember we had the A natural minor scale and the A harmonic minor scale. Now just to review, this is all in the left hand today, so we're gonna review the A, the A minor natural scale, and remember you're gonna start with your fifth finger on A. And this is, uh, so here's the A below middle C, we're gonna start another octave lower. So it's gonna be A, B, C, D, E, and then you're gonna cross your third finger to F, and then finish with G, and A. And we don't even really need to go back down for today's lesson, but you just want to make sure you get you re-familiarize yourself with these notes. And uh, it's still good to do this, this fingering when doing that. So that's natural minor. No sharps, no flats. It's just like C major, but starting on A. Now we need to review the A harmonic minor scale, which is actually more common, and we're going to use that in today's lesson. Remember that for harmonic minor, you raise the seventh note. So A is one, B is two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven is also one note below A, right? Uh, you're gonna raise it a half a step. So you're gonna sharp G to G sharp. So when you play the harmonic minor scale, you're not gonna play G, 
Instead, you're going to play G sharp, but still the same fingering. So back here, we're going to start with 5 on A, 4 on B, 3 on C, 2 on D, thumb on E, cross to 3 on F, and bring your 2 up to G sharp, and then finally, thumb on A. So the G sharp we're going to be focusing in on today, not G natural. So we're reviewing the A harmonic minor scale, which we just did. And we're going to look at the primary chords. So at this point, you should be familiar enough that primary chords in both major and also minor keys is 1, 4, 5. Specifically, 1, 4, 5, 7. Now, if you look there on the page, we know the one chord is going to be built off the first note of scale, which is A. But notice the Roman numeral in red is a a little Roman numeral one, not a capital. When we were in major keys, it was capital. Well, that's because the one chord in a major key is a major chord, but the one chord in a minor key is actually a minor chord. So we're actually playing A minor. Now, the easiest way to figure out these chords is first off, the one chord, like I said, is built off the first note of the scale. Chords are built of thirds. So what you could do is not even talking about half steps and, and whole steps. I'm actually talking about what we learned back at the very beginning of this book when we just dealt with strictly white keys. So we, we said like an A to a B was a second. A to a C is a third. A to a D was a fourth. And A to an E was a fifth. So that's what I'm talking about when I say thirds thirds. So if I start on A and I go up a third, that would be a C. Go up another third, that would be an E. So there's your A minor chord. That's probably the easiest way to do it and do the, the next two chords in just a moment. Uh, and then of course you adhere to your key signature. Now there's zero sharps and flats, so we're already good. We don't need to add any sharps or flats to this chord. So A minor is our one chord, A, C, and E. Our four chord is built off the fourth note of the scale, which is D. We're going to go up a third, which is F, and another third, which is A. Again, no sharps or flats in the key signature, so there's our chord, D minor. And you can see it's got a small Roman numeral four, indicating it's minor. Lastly, we have our tricky chord, the five seven. Now notice the five seven, the five, the Roman numeral five is capital. So it's going to be major. Now this is where it gets a little interesting. We know we're gonna start on E because that's the fifth note. Now remember I talked about the thirds. Let's stick with that, that rule for a moment. A third up from E is G. A third up from G is B, and a 5-7 chord, the 7 represents another third. Or you can count up 7 notes up from E. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's another way you can get this D. And it literally means, that 7 literally means it's 7 notes up from E. Or just build all of thirds. We're almost there. Notice that we have a G sharp. There's a G sharp actually written in. Now remember, that G is the seventh note in the scale, harmonic minor. So that's why uh, they want it to be a G sharp, because we're honoring harmonic minor in this case. And when you do that, you've suddenly created a major chord. E major, and then the D is the seventh. So this is actually called a five seven, right here. E seven, which is also indicated underneath the Roman numeral. So this would be minor, which is quite a nice sound actually. But because of the G sharp, it's actually major. And if you remember the beginning of the lesson, the third right there of this chord, 
major, minor. Very little difference. But uh, playing the primary chords in A minor, this is it right here, the 5 7. So these are all in root position A minor, D minor, and E7. But as you've learned in this book, this isn't how we play them. This doesn't lead to very smooth progressions in the left hand. So at the very bottom of the page, it says the following positions are often used for smooth progressions. So we're gonna start with the A minor in root position. But when we go to D minor, we're gonna to go to this inversion, A, D, and F, because that combination of notes is the smoothest, closest position from here. Why? Well, first off, D minor, does it have any notes that I'm playing right here in A minor? The A. So I'm not even going to leave that A. My fifth finger is going to stay there. So what notes are left? The D and the F. Where's the closest D and F? Second finger is already over the D. My thumb just comes up to the F. So this A minor to D minor root position is a little bit more tricky than this. Now I say it's tricky in terms of jumping, and the sound is jumpy too. But this, I don't even have to move my hand, and the sound is smoother. What's tricky about it is the finger work and reading it. That's a little bit tricky, but that'll come. And you've, you're probably going to feel, it really feels the same as like when we did C major. By feel, it's exactly the same. See what I mean? Sounds different, but by feel, it's the same. Now, the E7s where things get interesting. So your fifth finger goes to the G sharp, your second finger is on a D, and your thumb's on an E. Here was the E major earlier E, G sharp, B, D. So we've talked about this before with five, seven chords. You gotta have the E because it's an E chord. You gotta have the G sharp because that makes it major. You gotta have D because it's the seventh. You don't have to have the fifth. You can eliminate the B. So you're left with E, G sharp, and D. But coming off of D minor, where's the closest E, G sharp, and D. Well, I'm already playing a D. Here's G sharp, and here's the E. So there it is. And that's why that position. So we've got A minor, D minor, and E7. So you definitely going to practice that again and again and again, because we're, we're going to be using those chords in that progression, in that position, on our next lesson. Now you're also gonna to wanna to do it in this higher octave because, uh, well, for one, we're gonna be playing it here um, in lesson 74, but it, you know, it sounds better here too. This was kind of muddy down here. So, you know, unless you got a piece of music that's really meant to be kind of muddy sounding, you don't, want to actually use those chords unless unless you have to. I mean in that uh, octave. You want to use these chords up here. And we will be, so you really want to practice it up here uh, especially. Again, don't worry about the rhythm. Dotted half notes, three counts, but the main thing is learning these chords and being very clean with them and getting used to the sound. So we're used to, you know, a major chord progression, but this is our first minor chord progression. So it's a minor chord, a minor chord, and then a 5-7, which incorporates a little bit of major. It's not a true major 7 chord, and I won't get into why, because that can get very deep, but I want to be honest about that. But it has a major third in it, so there's a little bit of a major quality. But the full chord is actually called a dominant seventh, which has a little bit of major and minor into it. But again, I'm not gonna go any further than that. And that covers the lesson. So uh, the top half of the page is kind of just showing you the difference between major and minor, which is always nice. 
Uh, especially when you realize that the difference is just a half step difference with the third. So you can use that knowledge to really make, especially if you know your major chords very well, to make turn any major chord quickly into a minor chord. Um, rather than building a minor chord from scratch, you can simply say, well, I know C major and now I make it minor. And that's just a quicker way maybe to, to memorize them. But of course, eventually you want to memorize them all. You just want to say, you know, C major, E minor, D major, F minor. You just want to be able to go from one to the other like that. Um, and then of course, probably the bigger thing about this lesson because it ties into our next lesson on page 85 is learning the primary chords in these positions. All right, so spend some time with that. And then when you're ready, I will look forward to seeing you in that next lesson.